Okay, great. We're here in uh, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, we've just finished filming our Introduction to Supervised Learning with, with Scikit-Learn uh, course. I'm Hugo Baun anderson uh, data, science th data scientist at DataCamp. I'm Andy Miller. I'm a machine learning scientist and core contributor to Scikit-Learn. Maybe you can tell us what, what, what you do, Andy. Well, right now I work at Columbia teaching data science and applied machine learning. And um, yeah, I spend a lot of my time also working on the Scikit-Learn machine learning project, which is like an open source project which, with a really big community. And I'm one of the people that manages sort of the project. And can you tell us a bit about the philosophy behind, behind the project? Yeah, it's a lot about uh, usability and ease of use. The idea is really to democratize the access to machine learning tools. Absolutely. Um, and you mentioned that you're, you're now at Columbia teaching data science. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit about uh, what you think data science is, what it isn't, whether it's a vague term or not. Oh, it's definitely a vague term. Um, and it means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. So I'm definitely more on the machine learning end. Um, but there's people that do like uh, databases and call it, uh, call it data science or visualization. And uh, so it's a very broad term uh, and sort of, yeah, everybody has their own definition, I think. Absolutely. Um, you program in Python a great deal. Can you talk about Python in general and the role of Python in data science? Or? Sure. I mean, the, Python has grown a lot in recent years, in particular, like with the boom of data science. And I think one of the things that people like about it is that it's uh, really easy to pick up. The syntax is pretty simple. And there's a whole bunch of tools like uh, Matplotlib, Panda, Scikit-Learn, to help you with your data. Absolutely. Um, who are some, some people, either data scientists or developers in Python data science world who you admire or, or um, you have dealings with that are interesting? There, there's a lot of uh, people in like the PyData stack that I admire a lot. Like um, Jake Van der Plas just uh, wrote a great book, Introduction to, uh, to Data Science. and um, Nathaniel Smith, who works on NumPy, which is like the core of the SciData stack. And he also created with um, Stefan van der Waal together the new uh, color map for Matplotlib, uh, Viridis, which is pretty cool. And yeah, there's a lot of amazing people in this ecosystem. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, a lot of our students are coming to data science and potentially Python for, for the first time. And we, we always get questions such as, um, <clears throat> what type of things should I, should I be learning first up as, as a data scientist? Or what are the biggest roadblocks? Do you have any advice for aspiring data scientists? It depends a lot on what you want to do, I think. It's definitely important to be fluent, at least in uh, one of the data science languages. And I think that's at the moment it's R or Python. And so you should really learn to be, uh, to be able to manage your data, to pre-process it, to visualize it, to build models on your data quickly and to iterate quickly. Um, that like data science uh, is a lot about exploring your data and trying to understand it. Yeah. So the idea there wouldn't be to you know try to get a perfect model or you know get things down to perfection by kind of rapid push iterate and push, right? Yeah, it's definitely about a lot of like yeah interaction. A lot of there's like a lot of feedback loops. You try a model, you see why it fails. Or, and you can analyze the model and maybe you go back, maybe you need to collect different data or more data or need to process it differently. So in Python, now people use the Jupyter Notebooks all the time because they're really great for this interactive iterative analysis. Mm. And also for communicating what, what you're doing as well, right? Yeah. As opposed to, to scripting. Uh, you mentioned part of the philosophy behind scikit-learn is democratizing machine learning uh, in, in, in this case. Uh, in terms of democratizing uh, data science techniques and, and processes, sometimes it seems difficult because there's a certain amount of, that, of, understanding, of understanding that needs to take place. Um, a lot of people think they need to know a lot of linear algebra, calculus, statistics to do this type of stuff. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's the case, um, but maybe you could speak, speak to that in some sense. Yeah, it depends definitely a lot on what you are trying to achieve. If you want to build a predictive model using sort of off-the-shelf tools like scikit-learn, I don't think you necessarily need to have like um, a very strong linear algebra background, for example. So in the book that I wrote is basically no math and no formulas. So it's trying to give like a programmer's perspective of how you can apply machine learning. 
um, if you want to create new kind of models or very sophisticated models, definitely more background in, for example, statistics and probability theory will help. Mm. Yeah. Um, so in terms of all the different things you work on, what's, what's the most difficult thing you, you have to do? What's the most difficult thing I have to do? Or frustrating, or what, what, are, what are the pitfalls of living, living oh. the life of a developer and educator? And well, the hardest thing is to prioritize. <laughs> so I guess that's the main thing. Um, and in the open source world, there's always more to do. I literally get 100 notifications on GitHub every day. And so if I uh, create some talks or edu ed educational material, that means I don't re uh, review some pull request and I rarely have time to write code myself. And so it's very hard to prioritize what are the important things. Right. And on the other side, what are, what are the most fun things or what, what gets you jumping out of bed at, at 6 a.m. in the morning besides getting a train to, to Boston? Um, I mean, I really actually love coding myself and trying to come up with nice solutions. Um, also really creating tools to help people solve problems. If I know, oh, I can make this better in scikit-learn. If I make it better in scikit-learn, it will go out to tens of thousands of people that use it and like their life will be better for it. That's what I'm excited about. Fantastic. All right, this has been great, Andy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.